Hey everybody, welcome to my garage circuit breaker panel. What we're going to be doing today is checking on a safety feature, making sure that our generator input cannot be on at the same time as our main circuit breaker. Uh, right now with just a, a simple sub panel here, uh, the issue is I could have this 30 amp circuit breaker on for my generator input. We have a little indicator light showing that it has power. And if the main and that generator input can both be on at the same time, a person could open this up, stick their fingers in there and get a 240 volt shock. And we certainly do not want that. But likewise, if we're using this, we want to make sure we can have this breaker on and the main breaker off so we're not accidentally sending power back out to the grid through a transformer and kill some poor guy who's trying to fix a blackout. So unfortunately, on this particular panel, this is a sub panel that is main lug only. That means it doesn't have a separate big input breaker. Uh, in this case, the 100 amp main breaker is just in line with the rest, uh, just your normal branch breakers right here. And unfortunately, that means I can't just use a common uh, type of a disconnect that's designed so that a certain breaker you can only have on when the main breaker is off. They just don't design them for this. And in some ways, rightly so, because this is a sub panel, uh, you really want this normally done at the main panel. It's just in this case, I got a couple of things that are a little bit weird about my property that don't work out well for that. So I thought, I'm just gonna make something to make sure that there's no way I can have both these breakers on at the same time. So what I did, is I got my good old Harbor Freight digital caliper out and I just did some measurements. I did measurements uh, between the handles of the breaker, on the outside handles of the breaker, uh, measured the height of the breakers, uh, just so I knew what size and shape I would need to make something to go in here. And then I went to my computer, did a little bit of CAD work, and I created a shape and I printed it on my 3D printer. Now, I just printed this very thin because it meant it would be a very quick print, rapid prototyping. So I just wanted to make sure that it would fit on here. That was kind of the, the big thing because um, even this thin piece took, uh, I think it was about 25 minutes or so to print. But if you'll notice with this on here, if I move the one breaker, it's going to move the other main breaker on this breaker off now they're both off now the main breaker is on and this breaker is off so the shape of this allows for both breakers to be off or one or the other to be on but never both of them at the same time so after i had my prototype version done up then what I did is I made my final version, took a little longer to print. You can see this one is thicker. I made this basically the thickness of the breaker handles, about 13 millimeters or so. And the other thing I did here is this thickness gave me the opportunity to put some, let's see if we can get a good focus on this here. So if you can see the holes that are in here, these are eighth inch holes because on this style of breaker, there's sort of a pinhole right here. Now, unfortunately, it does not go all the way through. I can't just put a, you know, something nice and long through here. It's just going to poke in there just a little bit. So I've got my 3D printed part and I 3D printed it with eighth inch holes in there. And then uh, I reamed those out with an eighth inch drill bit. And a while back, I was at a local store and I saw they had a closeout deal on all of their uh, little pieces of hobby metal, kind of, you know, just some brass and things like that. So I bought every last piece that they had. So now I've got brass rod when I need it. This was 37 cents. So yeah, I bought like 20 of these uh, <laughs> rods and tubes, various sizes and shapes. And this is a nice size for going right into that little pocket in the end there. So I took my brass, I cut a couple of pieces, and I just made some little 
kind of some little pegs here, basically. So now all I gotta do is take my custom 3D printed part, put it over here, put the pin in, wiggle it around a little bit just to make sure we're in the right spot to get it into that Get it into the breaker there. It's a little wobbly, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pins in from the bottom here too, so we have the uh, connections top and bottom on both breakers and then on the outside and inside left to right of both breakers Okay, it looks like a pretty good fit again right now both these breakers are off This one's on that's off Both off main breaker on generator input breaker off and again, remember, the reason why we're doing all of this is so that we can't have the main breaker on passing power to here, where somebody could get a shock by touching those, or have power coming in from here, connecting to the main breaker, going back out over the grid and, you know, electrocuting somebody. So as it is right now, we should only get power from the generator cable into here. So right now, this is on. Both off, main breaker on. The other thing I want to point out here is that circuit breakers like these will still pop even if they are connected to another breaker or even locked in the on position. That's just the way that circuit breakers are designed to work. I hope you like these videos. Please like, comment, subscribe, check us out on Patreon. Uh, patrons get to see videos before anybody else, and we're doing some giveaways over there now as well. And until next time, stay charged up.